Up early for a superb breakfast. Judge for yourself. Excellent dining area. Great assortment of drinks, both hot and cold selections. Fruit, breads, cereal, and coffee. Then off we go on our $10 a day remock, the Cambodian Tuk Tuk, to visit the ruins of the Temple of Angkor Wat. We needed two of them, two people in each. $40 for a three-day pass. So we get the tickets and then to the temple area. First stop, Angkor Tom and the Bayon, which is right next to Angkor Wat, about a mile away. Angkor Tom means great city. Everybody is happy. Except the elephant. Recent investigations have shown that this was a massive complex and the temples of Angkor were just a part of what was probably the largest city in the world at that time, which had a population of as many as a million people. So big that it's believed to be the largest city in the world until the Industrial Revolution. The city is enclosed by a square city wall, each side being around three kilometers or two miles long, with five gates, north, south, east and west, and the Victory Gate also on the east. All roads leading to the Bayonne, which prompted a traveler in 1925 to say, we stand before it, stunned, it's like nothing else in the land. For the visitor today, even though we've been prepared for what we see, it's still stunning. The overall impact of the place is one thing, but as our eyes fall upon the detail, it's equally awe-inspiring. There are 54 towers, each with four faces. That's 216 faces carved in stone. All, it is said, are composites of Jayavarman VII and the Buddha all smiling down on us. The carved faces are enormous, breathtaking, and have made the Bayon almost as popular among visitors as Angkor Wat, both temples being majestic and awe-inspiring. The Bayon is exactly in the center of Angkor Tom, built after Angkor Wat, it's now been identified as a Buddhist temple. One of the joys of this place is being able to stroll through history. The enigmas of how it was built and why it was built, giving rise to the greatest mystery of all, what happened here that made the people suddenly desert it? Was it a drought? or a flood? Was it conquered by an enemy? Was there a plague? Scientists and archaeologists have searched for an answer. Something must have made it unlivable. It was abandoned and the people never returned. Why is it called Bayon? 
Apparently, the French named it Banyan, as Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment under a Banyan tree, and the name was corrupted over time. One is still able to enjoy doing the tourist thing. The awe and wonder it generated in me compared to my visits to the Sphinx in Egypt, the ruins of Machu Picchu in Peru, and the pyramids of Chichen Itza in Mexico. Certainly a wow moment. Photography? Amazing! Point and shoot gives great shots. Think about it first and get stunning pictures. The resident staff enhance the moment. This is an awe-inspiring experience. And it's not lunchtime yet. Next time, continuing to explore the amazing wonders of Angkor.